Hello, welcome back to the fish locker out on the boat. Now today, I'm out mainly for a session to collect bait. Now, just as the season is starting to change, mornings are colder. I've decided this I should maybe stock up for winter. Out to get some mackerel. Now they are a good size at the minute. They are decent sized mackerel. But what I'm also going to do is I'm going to maybe uh, try a few drifts, see if I can pick up some cuttlefish and some octopus. See what else I can find. At the moment, I'm just <laughs> just literally put a set of feathers down while I was busy setting up the other rods. And, uh, all I've done, I'm only in 30 feet of water. Literally set the feathers up, maybe a couple of feet off the bottom, just left them while I was setting the rods up. I picked up two mackerel there in the space of probably 10 minutes. Uh, I'm going to get a little bit further out onto this sandbank. And I'll show you the rig that I'm going to use to try and catch me up. Again, like I said, all I did was I just set it up about two foot off the bottom. And another tip that I've learned, I mean, I'm fishing here with probably half a dozen feathers. How many feathers have I got here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I've got six feathers on here. What you might have learned is that when you're fishing for things like mackerel and pilchards, they are generally a shoaling fish, which means that where there's one, there'll be more. So what I'll do is I'll lower my feathers down, and when you get one on, once you've got one fish on, set the hook and just kind of hold it there, just keep a bit of weight. You don't want to let it go slack because it'll just tangle you up in a great big knot. You just kind of hold the weight a little bit and give it a couple of more little bounces and quite often you'll find you'll pick up two or three more because the mackerel thrashing around attracts other mackerel in there and they see like a little bait fish which is your lure, two, three, sometimes you'll end up with a full string for that and wind them up slowly under control because you'll pick them up on the way up one fish that got at the start could turn into four fish, five fish, even a full string. Strange bite that. Set myself up a drift. Oh, I know what that is. That's actually that's a cold fish. I was just about to say, I've just set myself up a drift along a sandy bank, like sand and pebbles and broken shells. And uh, I'm just about to show you my rig. Cuttlefish or an octopus has actually attacked this, this low jig. Uh, what you get, you don't. It's not like a fight, like from a fish. What it is is you'll get one hit, and that's it, hitting your lure, hitting your bait, and then it'll just get heavy like that. And all you've got to do is you've just got to wind it in slowly, very slowly. And it won't feel like a, it won't feel like a fighting fish. It will just feel heavy, and then. If it goes light all of a sudden, it's dropped off. The 
you always like to have a jig or a lure or something fishing just in case like just in case of John Dory or something like that this is this is what I use for my octopus and my cuttlefish all they are they're just little squid jig lures that I bought from bought from eBay for <laughs> like 10 for 3 quid or something like that, something cheap and all I do is I just lash a little piece of mackerel flesh to their back I mean this one I've rigged a treble hook even and what they do is they don't actually have any hooks on them they just have these backward facing spikes and what happens is when the cuttlefish or the octopus gets hold of it and the suckers stick on these pike and spikes when you pull by keeping constant tension it keeps them on the spikes and all I do is I just fish it like this running ledger style now octopus and cuttlefish that live tight on the bottom you will catch them like this and all you do is you just drift along you just lower down slowly the reason you lower down real slow is so that you don't twist up now I've just hit the bottom now and I've set my drag that light your drag needs to be very very light so that when you're reeling in steadily if, this, if the octopus or the cuttlefish wants to try and dive back there isn't any real resistance if your drag's too tight and they can't draw a line they'll pull themselves off the spike straight away and uh, the trick is, is if once you've wound them in really slowly and got them up to the surface don't lift them out of the water scoop them up with the net as soon as you try and lift them out of the water they'll try and fight to get back in it try and fight to get back down to the bottom and they'll pull off so generally what you need to do is when you know you've got one on get your net ready and then I think I've got one, one on now get your net ready and then as you get them up to the surface scoop them up Another little trick is as well, when you do get one in the net, don't lift it straight onto the boat because it will squirt ink everywhere. Keep them in the net, move them around in the water a little bit, get them to squirt their ink out, then lift them aboard and put them in a bucket. fishing for squid, squid are generally up in the water so like a two hook flapper or a three hook flapper with a squid jig on fished off the bottom like you would do for mackerel I generally have a snood of about two foot long so you maybe have like six foot from top to bottom and every couple of feet have like a foot and a half or a two foot snood with a lure on just jig them about slowly and you'll feel a hit just wind in gently Coincidentally, drifting with like a live bait on the bottom can catch you these. Inadvertently, I've caught quite a lot of cuttlefish on live baits before. And if you're fishing a live bait and it ever comes back and it's dead and it's got the back of the back of its head caved in, that's a cuttlefish. A cuttlefish will attack the back of the head. A squid and an octopus generally attack the belly out.
areas of ground like this and drifting slowly like this is a good time to target gurnards. Now the two rigs that I like to target gurnards are either like a two down rig with um, like a 1-0 or a 2-0 with, with a strip of mackerel or just baited feathers. Baited feathers are fantastic for catching fish. Catch all sorts of stuff. You can catch 20 different species on baited feathers. Speaking of which, I'm going to rig some up. See if I can show you a gurnard as well. I have gently wound up and I've got a cold fish that's just below the surface. Sure, you're losing a couple of fish. I don't know if you can see there the amount of ink that's in the water now as well. See if that couple of fish there hadn't been able to draw a line as it was lunging, I would have lost it. There, look, see. See how it's dropped off the lure. As you can see, once you've got them in the net, they're generally they're in the net, unless it's a really little one that can maybe get through the gaps. An octopus, however, now yeah, look, it's just at another squirt. You can you can hear it going. It's squirting ink and water out. Hold it in the net like that until it's got no more water inside of its body, because it's got a gland that it makes the ink in and it mixes it with water so that it can squirt it. If it's got no water in it, it can't squirt ink anymore. An octopus, when it's in the net, an octopus can get through a hole that, that's that big. Once you've got it in the net, you need to get that in the boat or in a bucket quick. One of these, you can generally, once you've got it in the net, it's in the net. Right, there it is. What you need to be careful of, is it will attach to you and if it manages to get that beak in there look how sticky its legs are if it manages to draw you in and get that beak onto your skin it will bite you <laughs> they do nip and they are painful see now it's changing its colours they are an incredible creature aren't they the females the females are the big ones this big even up to this big your males are generally like the size of your fist so you're going to look where he's been chewing at that that bait They would attack those lures if I didn't have that bait on there. But I've found that with that bait, they generally hang on that little bit longer. All I did then when I, I felt like a hit and it get heavy, is I just wound in slowly like that. Just this speed just until I got it up to about maybe three feet below the surface and then tried to scoop it up with the net. 
I didn't do <laughs> I didn't do a very good job of it straight away, but I got it in the net eventually. I think I've got one on again straight away. Give it a little bit of line. Cuttlefish and octopus are fantastic baits for things like cod, conger. I like to use um, I like to use cuttlefish and tip it with octopus. Because, um, they're really tough, really, really strong smelling, really tough baits. So that when you're fishing for bigger things like conger and, and, and cod, little fish like pouting and Pouting and waiting don't rip your bait to pieces like they do with soft baits like that. I think I'm coming over a little bit of harder ground because I can feel the leg back. See the rod there just kind of trundling along the bottom. What I'm waiting for is like a hit or just to go heavy like that. I never did get a chance to rig that, uh, them baited feathers up for a gurney. Let's put this in a rest and see if we can get them feathers down. Ah, you. See what I mean? As soon as they get up here, if they want to get down and they lunge, that's it, they'll just pull themselves off. They're going up here really, really gent really, really steady. Really gentle. Really. I've come to the other side of the bay, and it's, uh, it's a little bit rockier on this side. Area. And what I've got is I've got uh, two little live bait, two little small mackerel, drifting um, along about maybe four feet off the bottom, because I'm hoping for the. Uh, a bass, a John Dory, or a cord, or just something, something that's down there. And uh, at the same time, at the same time, I'm drifting through with my baited feathers. Just have a little, little male cuckoo wrasse. Simply uh, an eight oh. I've got an eight oh chino on that side, and I've got a ten oh chino on there, and I've just got four foot of trace. A sliding leg. So all I've done is just literally lowered it down slowly so it doesn't tangle up all the way to the bottom. Let the lead hit the bottom, giving it three or four winds. And, just left it the and that way the mackerel bait is just swimming around as we're drifting, we're drifting along at uh, 1.1 knots. As we're drifting around, it will be uh, swimming about just off the bottom. Hopefully, there will be a predator there. Now, it, like I say, it could catch anything. Anything that's down there. Secretly, I'm hoping it's a John Dory. But I'm not holding out much hope. A pretty little female cuckoo wrasse. See, all I've done with these is I've just baited the bottom feathers with a little tiny strip of mackerel belly meat. The bites that I'm looking for on these two live bait rods is going to be like a hit and then a pull over. Or just a pull over as something big swallows it. The mackerel that I'm using are that big. So, whatever you catch has got to be able to swallow one of those. Fingers crossed. It's, um, it's a method that doesn't always produce 
but when it does, they're always great fish. There must be hundreds of these. Let's have a look. Double shot. These might even be husband and wife. We've got a very pretty male and a little female. Get these two back. I think I'm going to stop fishing with the feathers now because I've just caught <laughs> like eight or nine of these in a row. wait until something else comes along. This isn't usually a problem you should worry about having but I literally I cannot get to the bottom for the mackerel so I can't find anything else. Oh it's come off. I don't know what that is, but it's something big. Probably taking me mackerel now. Got him. It's a good one. Look at that beauty. What about that for a beauty? What a stunning bass. Is it a cracker in there? Taking on a live bait mackerel. Look at that size. See what I meant about? I'm taking big baits. Getting one hooked and getting back. Just quickly run through the rig. I will caught that bass while it's recovering in the net. All it was was a little bullet lead, like that, locked into a piece of about eight to ten inches long. And then I had a section of about three feet with a 10 0 chino. This is a, a 10 0 cox and roll chino. Now, you can use circles, circles are great for this type of fishing. I was actually trialling out using a chino. The reason that I wanted to try it out was because they've got a they've got a nice big gape. Just grab one of these mackerel. All I did was you literally you hook it into the mackerel like that. And 
I just load it all the way down to the bottom and then uh, when the lead hit the bottom quickly gave it two or three winds so just suspended it just off the bottom there we are drag set bait suspended just off the bottom and you saw with the bike before all it did was it just hit and then arched over now the first time it came round and hit the fish I missed it and you saw all it did was I just lowered it back and it came back again and you know what you need to do sometimes is even let off just a little bit of line and when they hit it like that they'll come round and come and have it again If you can see the gannets diving in the background there, there's got to be some fish about. It's absolutely teeming with mackerel. You can't even the sounder the sounder isn't getting through me. It thinks it <laughs> thinks that I'm in 20 feet of water when actually I'm in about 80 feet of water. Just because 20 foot of water there's a there's a shoal of mackerel that dense that just cannot get through me. Just have one last quick look at this bass before I let it go. Now I've been uh, been letting it recover in the net. It's a beauty, isn't it? Don't know what he weighs, he be. Maybe five, six pound. There it goes. Also, what I've managed to find. To catch a little baby scab. These are all also called horse mackerel. Now these are um, these are really good for live baits because they they're really tough. They last last for ages. There you go, baby scab. Now quite often what you'll find is when there are um, when you're looking on a fish finder, if there are shoals of fish that are really, really close to the bottom, like little patches right, right tight on the bottom, you'll often find that those will be scad. Mackerel will be up in the water, and scad will be down low in the water. Now I'll drop some feathers down to try and catch something on the bottom, and I just really cannot get away from the mackerel. I'll get this down and fishing and all sort of Probably going to come up a pile of knots with a one five mackerel. See how I'm feathering the bait down there, right? Like that. That's so that if something picks it up on the way down, I'll know about it. I'll feel it. Exactly what I expected. They are a nuisance, these little ones. They're alright when there's a few of them, but when there's this many, you just can't catch anything else. There, look. These are the bigger scad. Picked up right tight on the bottom. They are an unusual looking fish. You can see, look, they've got like an armoured plated they've got like an armoured plated ridge down their body. There, look. Alright. They, they live for ages. They are really tough fish. So great for live bait. 
trying to just drag the lead and the lures along the bottom. And within seconds, there's always someone picking it up. Any other day, that will be fine. Nope, very much still alive. I think something's found my scab as well. quite a bit of confusion between poor cod and pouting. One of the surefire ways to tell is that if you end up covered in scales like this, it's a poor cod. eventually managed to get through and I've picked up this little guy a lovely little red gurnard they're stunning aren't they covered in spikes armor plated head they just look like a little red dragon or a, a, a gorgeous blue eye I don't know if you can see inside their mouth, but it's bright yellow. Lovely guys, gurnards, aren't they? And very rarely do gurnards have trouble going back. They don't seem to blow like poor cord or pouting or white. Now uh, red gurnards, the good ones are between like a pound and a half, two pound. Grey gurnards, it's rare that you'll see one over a pound. Tub gurnards, they're, um, they're the big ones. Sometimes give them three, four, five pound. Anything, anything above four pounds of beauty. See what I mean? I've just carried the drift on over a reef. And it is it's very much up and down. My, uh, my little scud live bait just started going mad. You can feel them when you're holding them. You can feel them just gently swimming along and then they start panicking generally an indication that there's a predator fish around. Lost my life, bait. I'm going to start the engine and I'm going to motion out there. You will see when I spin the engine round a boiler rocks about 50 yards away. You can see where behind us it's only about 10 foot deep over there. There's actually rocks showing over there.
hard to see how people don't know the area. Let's say for instance if you, if you come through here in fog, oh, there's, so, <laughs> there's so many wrecks around here. I mean these boils and swirls here goes from 10 feet to 40 feet just like that. It's exposed to rocks. See them all in the background. Every single time there's like a boil like that, that means that the currents come over a rock. So, interesting place. I've just had a cold fish attack the live bait. And like I was saying before, if you get a live bait and its head smashed in like that, that's a cold fish. Fortunately this live bait is no longer a live bait. <clears throat> but that's generally what happens. Now at the minute at the minute I'm fishing on the bottom with my two other rigs. I've got a two down rig and I've got my baited feathers. The only reason why I'm why I'm persisting with the live bait is in the hope that there's possibly like a John Dory or something. Now on the baited feathers I was hoping for gurnets, anything else I could find really. But as it is just keep ending up with these. You see how the rod's just arched over? It's just a solid weight. That means it could be like an octopus. why I can really lift him aboard is because if you can see one of the hooks is stuck in him. Well these guys are strong and again that beak inside of there is what you want to be careful of. Yeah, look, this way, that's all it was. It's just a sliding ledger with the two down and I think this is a, a 2 -0 Cox and Roll specimen and that's a 1 -0 Cox and Roll bait holder. Perseverance paired off eventually. Pretty little red gurnard. See these had little legs and they walk about on the seabed on them. Sometimes when you catch them they do like a grunt, they go like rump, rump, rump. Conditions are starting to pick up a little bit because the tide's turning. So we'll maybe give you another half an hour and we'll head back. Head back and uh, feather up a bit more bait, maybe try for another, another couple of fish. this session that's why I'm saying it.
Oldu şurada. My life be took a hit. And it just got really heavy. And like I said, cool fish. that size I don't mind catching them the beauty's one of like that aren't they the beauty's one of that size sadly again though my live bait is now no longer alive I have something on that thing. Two down rings. An octopus or a goldfish. I feel when it goes heavy and then it, all of a sudden it gets light again. Which means they've just had hold of it and just let go. Well, I'm going to call it a day. It's been a fantastic day. My intention when I first came out was just to collect a load of bait. I was going to stop my bait freezer for winter. But conditions like this, I really couldn't stop myself. <laughs> uh, managed to get a decent, managed to get a decent bucket, a big mackerel. Same. Couple of nice big cuttlefish. Those eyes are crazy, aren't they? A couple of octopus. These guys are just unbelievable, aren't they? Fascinating, I only managed to change the colour so quick. Almost red to white to, to brown. Or... Some folks like to eat them. I don't really. I'm, I've tried them. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying they're bad. I just prefer using them as bait. Good for conga, good for cod, good for all sorts. Caught, um, caught a lovely bass uh, on live mackerel. Got some nice little red gurnards. Some other bits and bobs. Dogfish, sand ale, whiting. I hope, uh, I hope I've given you a few hints and tips on how to catch some fish. I hope you've enjoyed watching. I've really enjoyed myself. Um, have a nice day.